Hello and welcome to my cooking show. I'm Mitchell Goodwin. Uh, you'll see my wife Savannah Goodwin on here from time to time. And uh, I hope you can see me pretty good. Okay, maybe. Um, sorry, camera's new, the whole thing's new. Uh, we'll just get started. Um, this is my way of sharing everything with you guys. Uh, love cooking, love food, passionate about it. Um, I have a lot of high named chefs that are, you know, my absolute favorites, my idols, and part of the reason that I got started. They definitely continue to inspire me all the time. So, this is why we're here, though. I'm starting my own cooking show because, well, this is how I'm going to share my food, my dishes, and my purpose of cooking with the world, hopefully a lot of the world. Um, I think that a lot of people have lost the true meaning of what cooking is all about, and once you lose that, you lose your reason for the passion, and your food just starts going downhill. I've been there myself. I've gone from making some of the best dishes that people can't get enough of, to making some of the worst dishes that, you know, dogs won't eat, and it's all about your passion and where it's at. So, this introduction video is going to show you what the true passion of cooking is for, to remind everybody why people are passionate about cooking and why they cook. Never lose sight of that and your food will always taste good because your heart will always be in it. Okay, with that being said, um, let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to be doing a, um, a big barbecue for a bunch of neighbors. Like I said, one of the reasons behind cooking. The people you're cooking for. Um, I don't even know my, a lot of my neighbors very well, but I love cooking for people and I love seeing the smiles on their faces and I love people having a good time around me. That's what cooking's all about to me. So, here we go. We're going to get started on the barbecue sauce, um, which is just your simple cherry Dr. Pepper. Okay? And here I've got a two quart saucepan. We're going to fill this two quart saucepan. We've got the markings in here. Hopefully you can see this okay. But in there you've got the markings there. We're going to take it up to about 1.5 marker there. So we're just going to crack this open. And do it slowly or you'll have a mess all over your kitchen and all the hours you spend cleaning it will be for nothing. So here we go. Okay, so that's about three quarters of a two of one two liter of cherry Dr. Pepper. You can use just about any soda you want, but uh, this is the barbecue sauce that I'm putting on beef. And I tend to find that uh, for, you know, using sodas for barbecue sauces, Dr. Pepper goes well with beef. Um, and a few other things that we'll show you in some other, in some other segments. Um, but as you can see here, we've got a really full pan there. Uh, hopefully you can see that there. Don't want to spill any of it. But it's really full. We're just going to, we're going to cook that down a little bit and let that really gather some flavors. The other thing we're, the only other thing we're going to add to this is we're going to add some liquid smoke. Use your favorite brand, just make sure that the only thing that's there is actually liquid smoke. There shouldn't be a whole list of ingredients. If so, put it back and get something else because she's just adding a whole bunch of crap that's not going to be any good. So, we're actually going to use a good amount of this bottle in here because we want it nice and concentrated because this is cooking a lot of meat. Daddy, me. So, we're just going to pour this in here like this. Hope you guys can see that okay there. This is actually an applewood liquid smoke there. And thus far we've used uh, about three quarters of the bottle of that too. Daddy, are you making your own so, cooking show? Duncan, please go. I'm in the middle of an episode. Sorry, that's my oldest son. He's very curious and everything else. Uh, we'll do a quick introduction with the family here in a minute. But let's finish getting this um, finish getting this started. So you just want to you don't want to rush this. It's gonna yes, it's gonna take several hours. Um, 
I'll show you a magic trick here that'll take this for about five minutes. But unfortunately, you at home, it's going to take you several hours to cook this sauce. So we're just going to turn our rear burner here that has the pan on it. We're going to turn that up to medium heat. And we're going to leave it there. Okay, so we'll do the introductions um, another time. But for now, just keep an eye on this. Let it simmer down. Um, three quarters may be enough, depending on how, on how much barbecue sauce you need. If you need more barbecue sauce, then, you know, after this cooks down a little more, you know, add some more Dr. Pepper or even just use a bigger pan. Um, I've got a big five quart here, but it's going to be used for another purpose for the dishes that we'll get started here in just a second. So, for now, we're just going to put all this stuff off to the side. And uh, we're actually going to go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to fill this up. And keep in mind, you never want to fill your pans too hot. Sorry, you guys are going to lose focus on me uh, here and there. It's a very small kitchen, uh, very cramped. But, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter how small the kitchen you're working with. It, it just doesn't matter. It takes very little more than just actually wanting to cook to make a good meal. Daddy, may I see what you're doing? Of course, you know, there are a few things you can do to really screw up uh, any dish, and you want to avoid those. Thank you. So we're going to fill that to about three quarts full of water. And I just make it a general rule that anything that I'm doing with boiling water, I just take and just some regular and table salt. I like to use sea salt a lot, but right now I've got table salt. That's what I'm going to use. You can use just about anything you've got. And I'm just going to put about that much in the pan. And then you put it in the like it in like that, and then like it in the there. And then and we're going to turn the front burner because we actually want this to boil. We're going to go ahead and turn this up to medium high. Now be careful that you use the manufacturer's recommended setting on your pan because there's safety reasons behind all of this. So be sure to check your labels and clean them as recommended and cook with them as recommended or you can damage your pans once you've done that. They'll never cook evenly again and it's just it's just a mess. It's really hard to make anything delicious after that. Uh, yeah, personal experience. Dad. Okay, so basically all we're going to do here is uh, we're just simply going to uh, we're going to boil some water here. we got our sauce starting on the back there. After the water boils, we're going to put a dozen eggs in that for a potato salad we're making. Like I said, it's a barbecue. What's a barbecue without potato salad? So, on that no. note, because that note. nobody likes waiting, no. No. we're just going to go... No. I'm going to say the magic words, and then we'll jump forward a couple of hours, and our eggs will be boiled, Egg. our sauce will be ready, and I'll show you how we're going to put that together. So, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, two one. one. Abracadabra! That was a trip through time. Okay, so let's see. We travel about three and a half hours into the future. Not really, but it makes it fun. Okay, so what we got going on so far is we've actually cooked down the entire two liter of Dr. Pepper, or cherry Dr. Pepper, excuse me. We've cooked that down into what you see going on over here. Let me bring the camera a little closer and give you a view. It's gonna get a little shaky for a minute. Here you go, here. This is what we got going on. You saw how full it was before. We actually added that other quarter of the two liter of uh, cherry Dr. Pepper and we've cooked that down. Okay, so what else we've got going on so far is um, that's the pan soaking from the roasted potatoes. Whoa. Here's our cut eggs, our egg yolks. We just took a fork, mashed them up. The potatoes are just simply um, Let's get this resituated for you guys here. So you can a look here. Okay, so. In the middle of the egg. The potatoes are simply cut to a southern style, which is just simply. This cut here. You just simply cut your potatoes like this for your potato salad. Because, like I said, we're doing a big barbecue potato salad, some corn on the cob. This is really delicious. This is just simply dried parsley, dried basil, 
a little bit of seasoning salt and some olive oil, tossed that up in the pan and roasted it 475 degrees on the barbecue grill in a stainless steel roasting pan so that it didn't burn to the grill and you know that's a big mess and it allows you to do small things on your grill. So, we're going to put those back in the fridge to continue chilling and we're going to start putting together our potato salad. So I've already got the eggs all pre-done up and everything else so we're good there. Uh, we're working on some just succulent barbecued ribs. These things are just going to be absolutely delicious and uh, we'll give you some first-hand experience, uh, first-hand testimonies to that a little later on when everybody else joins us for dinner. So um, we're also going to put together the barbecue sauce for that. Got an empty bowl over here. We're going to be using some of that with some other ingredients here in just a minute. So let me go ahead and grab and I actually use Miracle Whip because it's got one third the fat of regular mayonnaise. And sorry, right, I'm gonna bob in and out of the camera view here. Just uh, bear with me. Hopefully sometime in the near future we'll get into a bigger house or a bigger kitchen and we won't have that problem. But for now we do. Are you making this so it go on the TV? <sighs> Kinda. Okay. So, mustard. You always want to use mustard for this. We've got mustard. French's mustard and Kraft Miracle Whip. It'll actually give it a little bit of a tang, along with those seasonings. Oh, and I also put some black pepper on those potatoes. And they slow. Ro they roasted at 475 degrees on the grill, as I said, for approximately 25 minutes, I'd say. Kind of speeds it up and uh, they get a little bit of smokiness from the grill from everything else I've cooked on it and whatnot. So, okay. Over here in my drawer here. We're going to grab a tablespoon. I know this is the most confusing thing ever, right? Everybody says, tablespoon this, tablespoon that. Well, here's what we, here's how I measure out my tablespoons, okay? I just do large scoops. For what I'm cooking, it's six large potatoes and one, two, three. We're gonna go ahead and add a fourth scoop. So we're gonna add four scoops to that. And we're just gonna set this off to the side because we may need some some later. As always, you wanna you wanna taste your recipes as you're working on them. And, you know, you can tweak it or if, you, if something comes to mind while you're making it, you, know, you can always add to it. You can always change up mine and, you know, I welcome recommendations and anything else. Um, you know, suggestions, comments are always appreciated and whatnot. So, French's mustard. We're just going to bring the bowl over here because I just kind of eyeball it. That's how I cook. So, let's see here. Get you a good view of the camera there. Let's turn you down a little bit here. Okay, where do we need to go here? Ouch. Okay, there we go. So here we go in with the mustard. I'd say that's a uh, good... I'd guesstimate that to be a quarter cup. I could be wrong, but you see how much of there. Make Just kind of eyeball it. Uh, mustard's pretty strong, keep that in mind. We're gonna mix this up. We're just gonna do the whole base right here for you guys. Yeah, this is the whole base of the sauce here. And normally I would mix this up in a smaller bowl and then put it in the potato salad itself, but we're just gonna do it this way for you guys tonight. Ooh, sorry. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, I got kids in the kitchen. <clears throat> Go on, guys. May I see you? You can say hello to everybody later. For now. May I see? No, for now, for now I need you to go. Come on. Go on. Right now I just need you to go. Okay, it's gonna look a little rough. Usually does. Um, if you want it to look less rough than this, you just simply uh, you know, break down the egg yolks some more. And I'm actually gonna add another scoop of the Miracle Whip because I like mine to look lighter. And just a half another scoop, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna mix this up real well. You can always tell by the color, you know. Just, if you buy if you buy the store-bought potato salads and you really like how one of them tastes, 
just, you know, and you'd manage for this too. Mommy, you just, Daddy. just eyeball the color of it and, you know, get it to the color you want and then, you know, of course, taste it. You can always, you can always put more in it later, change it up, whatnot. Daddy, may I, may I mix it? Okay, so, may I do some mixing? we've got the base mixed up for you now here. And I think that looks good for me. So we're going to leak, we're going to put this off to the side now. And the way good, I've always Daddy. done it is we do egg whites in it. Yeah. So I'm gonna chase my kids out of the kitchen here. Go on. And I'm gonna pan you over to the cutting board here. Uh, So let's see here. Okay, that should give you a pretty good view. Here's the egg whites. So we're just gonna take a couple of these, you know. And one of the best ways, you know, save time on cutting stuff is just to kind of pile it up. Because it doesn't need to look too fancy. They're not going to hardly see it. They're only going to taste a little bit of it and whatnot. You know, unless you want to do something for presentation on top, which you can always do. Uh, my mom used to make it that way. She would uh, take and take some of the eggs and just uh, slice them all into rings. And then uh, with the yolk in it, she'd slice it in rings and then cover that on top with some paprika. We're just going to run the knife through this because not a whole lot of people I'm serving are, are big on the egg white. They like it because it's kind of traditional to a potato salad. It doesn't quite taste the same without it. So we're just going to run our knife through this real quick. Here. And just kind of get some fine chopped up bits of egg white in there. Because that's how my group likes it. If you like large chunks, you know, however you like it, go for it. It's not going to change too much based on the size of the chunks of your egg white. Or if you don't like egg white in there at all, don't put it in. It's the best part about making your own food, the home cooked foods and everything else. Um, I don't think there's anybody in the world that can't cook. Even the people that burn water. I know, they'll have blood, burn water. Impossible. No. Trust me, I've met some people who can literally burn water. They, they just, I mean, they simply just cannot cook, um, but even them, I think with a little instruction, a little help, they can all cook. I don't think anybody's hopeless, so if you're sitting there watching it going, oh man, I could never do that, yeah, you can. If you don't think you can, if, you know, you need some help, whatever, um, you know, shoot me an email. Uh, I got Skype, I got, you know, I got all kinds of stuff. Just shoot me an email. We'll see what we can do. Okay, peeling an onion, easiest way. I love doing it this way. Chop off the top, chop off the bottom. Don't drop your onion. And then take and just cut a slit in it, just like this. Just run your knife right through that, through that first layer there. And then just peel off that top layer of onion. Or if it goes like that, you can just take the whole thing with you. Right there. And then you got nice, good, fresh onion on the bottom there. Just toss that all away. Grab a paper towel here. And just kind of wipe off our knife a little bit. Wipe down our area. Just a tad here. Not too big a deal because we're cutting onion on it. And it's all going in the same place anyway. If you're cutting it, if you were doing it in different dishes and you didn't want a specific thing in there, then make sure you wash your knife and your cutting board down real good. Um, but because this is all going into the same dish, we're not going to worry about, you know, cross-mixing those flavors. If it was a, can a food contamination issue, then, you know, we definitely make sure we took care of that. But for this, you know, it's, there's just no big deal to it. So we're just going to take, we're going to make some nice slits there and there, like this, just every so often. Just kind of a nice little cube side, you know, whatever size onion chunks you like in there. Or if you like slivers, do slivers. But if you like the cubed onions, you know, uh, like a kind of like a julienne or cute type slice to it. You just run your knife in a pattern, and it should look like a big crossword puzzle or you know tic-tac-toe board or something like that. Anyway, yeah, especially if you got a nice flat edge on it. If you got a nice flat edge on it like this, then it really helps. And make sure your knife is sharp. Number one cause of injuries in the kitchen is dull knives. Stop moving my camera. Sorry about that, kids. Curiosity. Okay, so now that that's done, all you gotta do is just simply, see if we can get this lined up pretty good. Just simply, just like this. 
Oh, look at that. Beautiful little chopped onions. Just like that. Like I said, we don't need a whole lot. And if your knife didn't go through, don't panic. It's no big deal. You can always just kind of, you know, there's some nice little plant line patterns on there. You can just kind of do it like that. And, you know, nothing really matter because you can always just do it today. And do it like that. But if you try to slice it one way and slice it the other way and then slice it back the other way, it consumes a lot of time. And onions are pretty soft. So you can just do it that way. Picked that trick up from uh, several TV chefs, actually. Uh, to name a couple, Bobby Flay, Emeril Lagasse, uh, Alton Brown, which, by the way, those guys are just, I've never personally met them, but from their cooking shows and everything that, you know, I've seen, heard, and read about them. Spectacular chefs, amazing guys. Um, obviously, inspiration to many. Daddy, may I mix for you once you've got all the ingredients in? And we're just going to scrape that into our bowl there. And then, we are going to get into the fridge here and grab out some pickles. And if you buy them speared or however you want to, it can take you some time or you can just buy them whole, depending on however you want to. Daddy, I don't like pickles. Again, I don't like pickles. a lot of people I'm cooking for don't like pickle a whole lot, but it kind of brings to get the dish together and get a traditional bacon. flavor to it. So we're just going to use a couple of these large suckers here. Bacon. We're going to pop the lid on that and put that back in the fridge real quick. Okay. And then we're just going to make a slice and we're gonna slice each one of these in half. And then put it in here and then make your make like this. Some I hope you guys can see that okay. Yeah. Okay, and then we're just going to take and we're going to uh, just cut this all up like this. And uh, always make sure you keep your fingers back and anything that will allow you to make sure you keep these knuckles down against the food that will keep you from cutting yourself most of the time. Um, just be really careful, especially with foods like pickles that are a little wobbly and whatnot. But again, having your knives completely sharp um, will also help avoid cuts in the kitchen because a sharp knife will go right through anything and you don't have to give that extra force because it's when you give that extra force that you end up with that problem. We're just going to kind of chop this down a little more, make a little more fine yeah, chops. People don't like large chunks of pickle, or at least people that, you know, I'm serving, they don't like large chunks of pickle. If you got pickle eaters and you go through a couple gallons of pickles a month, well, then by all means, leave the pickles as large as you want. Again, personalizing any recipe can just make it that much more delicious and, you know, tells your guests, hey, look, you know, I spent the time personalizing this for you and I know you. If, if you know how your guests like your food, it says that you actually know them. Daddy, may I make like I said earlier, food isn't just about getting in the kitchen and heating up meats and cheeses or vegetables or, you know, throwing salt, pepper, and other seasonings and spices into it. That's not, you know, there, there's a lot more to food than just that. And once you learn that, you're set. Okay, so there's the complete base to our potato salad. Normally at this point I would season it, but like I said, we're cooling the potatoes and then we're going to throw the potatoes into the mix. So I'm just going to mix that up real nice like. Um, and then we're going to move on to the barbecue sauce here and we're going to let the potatoes cool some more. And I'll have to wash pan here in a minute. And then after that we'll cut again and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get back to some of the enjoying of the food because for the most part it's just going to be really simple. Although I do want to show you this real quick before we go anywhere else. Hello there. Hello okay, there. there you go. Okay, so here we just took we took our, our, our ribs out and we threw them on the grill just real quick. Daddy, I'm going to turn the camera and make sure you guys are getting a good view of that. So we just took these out and yeah, they're still completely raw. But what we did was we just took them on there to get some nice char because again, we're going to be using that roasting pan technique I was talking about for your grill. And we're going to roast those suckers in there for, for some time and they're just going to get fall off the bone. All right, so I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. Thank you. Okay, so real quick, like, um, sorry I'm not washing the feed this time. I just got you located right here. Um, so real quick, like, just want to show you. All we got in here is like about three quarters of a, bo a 32 ounce bottle of ketchup and um, well, a bunch of brown sugar.
sugar. Probably a good cup, cup and a half of brown sugar. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our mixture that we've been cooking down for the last about four hours, three and a half, four hours. We've cooked down, we have cooked down an entire two liter bottle of cherry Dr. Pepper and three quarters of a bottle of liquid smoke, apple wood liquid, liquid smoke, down into this concentration right here. This is gonna give our food so much flavor and it's just those two simple ingredients and anybody can turn on a burner and watch it on the stove. So as you can tell my motto is definitely that anybody can cook. So we're gonna add this a little bit at a time because it is hot but we're gonna go ahead and add it here because we need a lot of sauce for what we're cooking because we're cooking a lot of food. So we're just gonna go ahead and I'll do the I'll do a backhand on it for you. We're just gonna go ahead and just kind of whisk that in there a little bit at a time. We're also using a plastic bowl so we don't want to melt it too much. I don't want to melt it at all, actually. But we're just going to kind of mix that in there because we want this to be a nice thick sauce as well. Uh, so we're just going to kind of slowly whisk this together. Um, and don't worry if you have extra of the concentrate. There are a lot of things you can do with this concentrate. A lot of different dishes you can make. So we're just going to continue to whisk this together here, like this, like so. And hopefully you can see how nice and dark and everything else that's starting to look. We are going to give us a taste test before we call it all good. And just be on our merry way, but... While we do want it thick, we don't want it too thick. We actually want it a little bit thinner than that, I think, for tonight's purposes. So we're going to go ahead and add just a little bit more. Not a lot, just a little. Just a little splash. So there you go. Okay, I'm going to put this back on my burner. Now we're going to finish thick sauce there. And you know, be kind, you know, you are serving to other people, so don't stop sticking your fingers in there. Some plastic silverware, just a spoon, and just kind of dip it in there, get a nice little coating there, and taste it. And this is why we taste it. it tastes a little bit like ketchup. So, we are actually going to go ahead and add in more of that. Most of the rest of that. I actually got thick this dirt. We're going to go ahead and add all that in there. Because you don't want your friends eating ketchup rinks. That wouldn't be any good. We're going to go ahead and mix this all together. Go ahead and decide to add a couple of seasons to it as well. smokiness to it. So we need a little bit more now. So we're going to go ahead and add a couple seasonings to this at this point. Not a whole lot because it'll take away from what's naturally there. Just a little bit of, a little sprinkle of seasoning salt. My secret cooking ingredient. Just paprika. 
Good amount of paprika there. And then we're gonna go ahead and we wanna have it a little, you know, you don't want it too bland. You don't want it too sweet. We're gonna go ahead and add some black pepper. And we're also gonna add some white pepper. Because they both have a little different flavor. I mean, yeah, pepper's pepper, but white flavor, white pepper's are kind of more mild, and you know, well, black pepper's kind of speaks for itself. So we're gonna do that, and we're just gonna mix that in there. And we may need to add a little more brown sugar to it, we may not. It's already pretty sweet. We don't want it too sweet because then everybody's just going to get a stomach ache from eating the food. You might find what you want. And we're just going to mix that all together there. Kind of roll it and get it off the disc. We're just going to wash the spoon real quick. My handy little uh, dish soap sponge. Love these things. Off here. Okay. And give that a quick taste. Mm. You know, we're actually going to go ahead and add a little more paprika and a little more pepper. more black pepper because there's nowhere near enough spice in it for me. So I'm actually going to require a bit of black pepper there. Then I'm also going to go ahead and add a little more of that liquid smoke there. Because it just, unfortunately we just got uh, probably too much brown sugar and a little too much ketchup for the mixture. to do these larger batches when you need so much and so you just got to kind of tinker around with it until you find the right happy medium flavor for what you're cooking with yeah that's going to be for everything you can't always just you know okay well i need four times as much of this seasoning or four times as much of this ingredient because sometimes your recipes don't always work out that way and normally i make this in a much smaller batch so that's kind of what we're dealing with right here which is not a problem we'll just keep seasoning it and keep tasting it until we get to a just so point right where we want to be. It's better to take your time to be patient than to rush it. So anyway, uh, once I'm done tinkering with the sauce and getting it right, we're going to take this roasting pan here. We're going to take this roasting pan I got here and uh, we're going to put the ribs in it and then we're going to coat the ribs in the sauce and we're just going to let it simmer in there. We already seared it on the grill so it got a nice color and a nice natural barbecued you know, flavor to it. And so now we just want to make them nice and tender and juicy and the best way to do that is to cook it like this. So um, we'll see you guys later. Well here we are at the grill with the steaks. Barbecue sauce we made a little while ago. It's covered in it both sides, flipped it over. They've been sitting there searing and smoking up in that barbecue sauce at a nice low 350, 400 degrees on the grill. Yep, like Emerald's famous for saying, heat control, that's what the knobs are for. All right, so we're gonna let those finish up and I'm gonna go show you guys the ribs. Okay. See him out here a little bit. There you go. How's that look? Nice, juicy, full of flavor. Took a while, but it's all worth it. There's a leftover sauce from one of the pans that we cooked them in. You saw them earlier. And here's dessert I made. 
That is just simply Cheerios, peanut butter, Captain Crunch, marshmallows, one stick of butter, and a few chopped up white chocolate raspberry Hershey's Kisses. Just melt the butter, get it hot, put in the chocolate after you've chopped it up a little bit, then put your marshmallows right in, melt them so they're just nice and gooey, toss the cereal in, mix it, put it in the pan. Mmm, delicious. So, that's about it. I can show you the completed potato salad here real quick. There's the completed potato salad. Just toss some paprika on there for a nice look and a little bit of flavor. Absolutely delicious. Alrighty. Well, that's it until the guests start arriving and then uh, we'll show you what it's really like when uh, you get a bunch of people around.